Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're going to show you how to install the Silverstone Hydragon D120 ARGB. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so this installation is actually pretty straightforward. First of all, you're going to need, obviously, your motherboard and all that kind of stuff, and also the AM4 or AMD fitting kit from inside the box. You will also need the screwdriver as well, which is provided. You'll also need some thermal paste. There is some included in the kit, or alternatively, if you can do, you can use uh, MX4 or any other thermal paste that you choose. No problems there whatsoever. Obviously, as well, you're going to need motherboard, processor, and all that kind of good stuff, but we're going to concentrate mostly on the actual installation of the back plate. So the first thing to do is with your motherboard in the standard configuration, straight out of the box with the AMD mountings on, we're gonna to wanna to get a cross-headed screwdriver. You'll see we can use this one included and remove the four screws from the four corners of the standard mounting bracket. Just undo those. Loosen those off. The back plate, which is on behind, we do actually need to reuse. So don't have to remove that, just these plastic mountings and also the four screws which are there. So we're gonna take that one off, take that one off, put those to one side. We can put those back in the motherboard box when we're finished. So the next thing to do is to open up our AMD fittings kit. And the first thing we're gonna want is the plastic spacers. So in the kit, there are four plastic spacers. So just go ahead and put one over each one of the protrusions from the back plate. and it should end up with something like that. The next part is the four thumb screws. Now these are actually threaded, coarse on one side, fine on the other. So just make sure you thread them in the correct way. I believe it's the coarse way. Yeah, so those just screw in. Once you've got the last one in, you can then go ahead and just make sure that they're all firmly tightened. You don't need tools, just uh, hand pressure is absolutely fine there and just make sure the back plate isn't loose or wobbling. So that is pretty much most of it done. You can at this point, if you want to, put the CPU in. So we're gonna open up the retention arm, grab our processor, which is the 5600G, and just make sure that the writing on the processor is the facing the same way as the writing on the socket. Or you can, if you want, there is actually a little golden triangle, which matches up into the bottom corner there. So place the processor on, let it plop into the socket, and then push down the arm, make sure it's in place. You can do this after if you want to, it's entirely up to you. Next thing to do is to put the brackets on. So we've got two brackets, which are kind of M or W shaped, whichever way you want to look at it. And you want to have it like an M at the top and a W at the bottom. The next thing we want to do is to get actually the thumb screws, which are bizarrely, for some reason, they put them in the Intel bag. So we'll grab those now. So there's four thumb screws, which I'll show you on the overhead. So these are just to tighten things up. So all I'll do is start in one corner and do those up. Just do them hand tight to begin with. There is actually on the screw itself, there is a flathead type screwdriver attachment. So once we've got them installed, we can then go ahead and tighten them up a little bit with a flat headed screwdriver, which sadly isn't included in the kit. So you will need to uh, provide one of those yourself. So that's down, hand tight. And then what I'm gonna do is grab a screwdriver and just give it another sort of maybe three quarters of a turn. So there are small flat headed screwdriver. Just gonna give it another little turn. Just to make sure it's tight. And there we go. That is it, fully tightened down. So the next thing to do is to put some thermal paste actually on the CPU itself. I'm gonna be using a little bit of MX5. Just gonna put a little blob in the middle there. You can, if you want to at this point, use a plastic spreader to spread it out across or obviously use the method of your preference entirely down to the individual. So now we're ready to actually install the cooler itself. So. Essentially what you want to do is try to get the cables all to one side so they don't interfere with the screws and then obviously not forgetting to remove the plastic sticker on the bottom, the protection sticker, and then we can lower it down onto the cooler. Now I would suggest if you can try and match up one of the screws, which is here and here, just try and match up one of them on one side to begin with, just rest it on top 
And then if you move around to the other side, you can just lower it down gently and make sure you're in the right position. Now the screws themselves actually on the cooler do move a little bit. So you have got a little bit of adjustment there. So you might need to wiggle it around a little bit. And that looks like both are in the right position. So now we're ready to get the screwdriver, find the little indentation in the top here. And you can see the screwdriver going down through, get it into the head and maybe just do a couple of turns just to get it started. So there we go, there's a couple of turns there just to get it started. And then we can move around to the other side. And once you get on the other side, you may require a little bit more pressure. So that's started now. So then all you need to do is just alternate on each side. And do a few turns. And that should give you some equal mounting pressure. Once you've done enough, you'll notice that it actually won't turn any further. That's it. So don't over tighten it. That is all it is necessary. So that is it completely installed. All we need to do now is you can choose whether or not you plug in your addressable RGB headers and where you plug them into. You can, of course, like we said in the uh, review, you can daisy chain these connectors. So if you've only got one PWM connector, you can just plug in both fans into the one header and then just plug in a single connection to your motherboard header. Obviously look on your instruction manual, see where your motherboard headers, but that is essentially it. All the all installed, nice and easy to do and actually quite a, a painless task. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Any comments or questions, you know where to stick them in the comment section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.